setting up a proper white balance in Lightroom can be difficult. With this video, let me show you how I approach the white balance for this scene. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description. And now let's jump into it. This is our RAW file. At first, you might think the white balance looks quite fine with all those cold color tones. However, the first indicator of a wrong white balance is the histogram. Take a look at it. You can see three differently colored peaks, red, green, and blue. While the red and green peaks are nicely aligned, the blue peak is quite the outlier. Translated into this image, this results in a very heavy blue color cast. And in turn, the white balance is off. Now my approach of fixing that is I'm going to play around with the temperature and the tint slider. And while I push these sliders around, I'm trying to align all three peaks up there in the histogram. So for this image, this would mean I'm going to increase the temperature, reducing the blue color tones. And as I push up the slider, you can see how the blue peak is coming closer together with, with the other two. So right about here, we end up with a way more natural looking image. We can also push the tint slider around to try and align these peaks even more. Just like this. Now we are starting to lack a little bit of color. So let's scroll down a bit in the basic panel. And I want to introduce some more saturation by bringing up the vibrance. And I also want to bring up the saturation itself. Pushing those sliders, the colors will be more obvious and we can get a better idea if the white balance is correct or not. If you want to make your life easier, you can push the vibrance and the saturation all the way up. Now take another look at the histogram. We can see those three peaks are now again further apart. So we are just going to repeat the steps from before. We are going to push the temperature slider and play around with the tint slider to try and align those peaks again. And once we have done that, we can go back to the vibrance and saturation sliders and bring them down to our liking. So for this image, I think some more heavier saturation is quite nice. So right about here looks fine to me. And just like that, we have set up a very natural looking white palette without using Lightroom's auto setting or any other fancy stuff. While we now have a neutral color cast, this might not always be the desired result. For this image, I do in fact want to have some subtle blue color cast because I think it just looks better with this cold looking landscape. So what I want to do at this point is I want to start to kind of color grade this image by using the white balance adjustments. I'm simply going to drop the temperature very, very carefully. And as I drop the temperature, you, you can clearly see, especially in the sky, we are introducing some more color and just overall some more coldness. So right about here looks perfect to me. I'm not going to touch the tin because I like having some magenta-ish colors going on in this image. But what I want to do next is to adjust the tones. And as we adjust the tones, so let's say highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, we might need to further tweak the white balance. So let's take a look. What I want to do first is I want to bring down the exposure. And I'm doing this because I want to make the sky a little darker. I can bring the exposure down quite heavily like this. We still have a lot of details to play around with. So as an example, I can bring up the whites. And by doing this, we're just adding a lot more punch to this image. We are just kind of stretching the histogram. And as we stretch the histogram, the blue color cast will get more obvious since those three peaks in the histogram are again further apart. But as I said, I like a little bit of a blue color cast for this image. So I think that's a good point for the whites. We are not into the overexposed parts yet, but it does have a nice brightness to it. We can try further pushing it by playing around with the highlights, just bringing them up a notch. And if you want to add more contrast, we can now work on the darker tones by bringing down the shadows. And you can see how this nicely adds some heavy punch to this image. We can also play around with the blacks, bringing them down to further introduce contrast. However, I'm not a big fan of the look for this scene. So instead of bringing them down, I want to bring them up very, very slightly. And in fact, I might actually also bring down the contrast just a little. 
which adds some kind of very nice soft look to it. Okay, now exposure wise, this image looks quite good. The white balance looks perfect to me as well. So what I wanna do next is to add a little bit of texture, giving the trees some more sharpness in those smaller details. I also wanna bring down the clarity. Again, this helps with this kind of soft look overall. And I do wanna bring up the dehaze just to give this image a clearer look. So I'm quite happy with those basic adjustments already. We can compare to before real quick and you can clearly see a difference in the colors. Also, we do have way more contrast going on. We have nicely separated the trees from the background and the sky. So I don't think there's much left to do for this image. Let's continue with a little bit of masking. In fact, I just want to apply one mask and that's going to be a linear gradient. Just going to cover the sky very, very roughly like this. And what I want to do in here is to make it darker. How can we make it darker? The most obvious tool to make it darker would be to bring down the exposure. The problem here is we are also going to make the top of the trees darker, which is not what we want. So I'm not going to drop the exposure. Instead, I'm going to drop the blacks because the sky is filled with blacks while the top of the trees are mostly highlights and whites. So we can safely bring down the blacks without affecting the trees too much. Let's bring it down some more, just like this. And I'm going to pull this linear gradient further down. I think this looks great. I do think we can push the saturation of the sky some more because we have some really cool color tones going on in here. So let's bring up the saturation some more like this and we are done with the masking already. Okay, at this point there's just a little bit of color grading left. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer and go into the saturation tab. Here we want to work on the blue tones, purple and magenta. All three of them we wanna bring up. Let's start with blue. I'm also going to raise purple. And we don't have much magenta in here, but just to be safe and prevent any weird color banding in the sky, I'm going to raise the magenta tones as well. Wonderful, this looks so much better. Now we can do a little more color grading in the calibration tab. As always, I like to play around with the blue primary hue and saturation. I'm just going to bring up the saturation first. And then let's bring down the hue very, very gently. Wonderful. And now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So as always, bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking while holding down the Alt key. And then we want to increase the amount of sharpening. Perfect, that's it. And here we have the finished image edited only using Lightroom. So I hope this little white balance trick will help you with your images. Let me know if you're approaching this a little differently because we're all here to learn. So I hope this was helpful and interesting. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you guys next time.